Hello, everyone, and welcome to the official kickoff episode today of my newly launched show. And while I've recorded several episodes a while ago, this is going to be a new recording with a dear friend, coach, and mentor, Marsh Engel. And Marsha, I'm, Marsh, I am so grateful that you are here with me today for this kickoff. I am thrilled to be with you. This has been a dream of yours for some time. And, and I yes. love seeing it take place. I love seeing it happen. Thank you. And you were actually instrumental, which is why I'm choosing to go out of sequence and, and um, have this be my first official episode because it was probably two years ago at least that you and I sat down over the computer working together and drafted up this white paper for my podcast show, whatever it was going to be. And I finally got to this point where I drew that line and I was done talking about it, thinking about it, feeling into it. It was ready to be birthed. So I couldn't be more excited to be celebrating and kicking things off officially with you today. Oh, and equally so, equally so. I love, you know, sometimes things take time. They just take time. We can create something and then when the time is right. So it's not always that we're delaying it. It's more of getting everything in order. And now, now it's time for it to launch. So I'm thrilled to see it taking place. And I'm thrilled for, I know some of your uh, future releases that are getting ready to happen. And I know maybe you're talking about them and maybe you're not, but I know that this is a, a, sub, a substantial, significant part of what you're creating. And I love seeing it all take shape and form. And yeah, yes. it's, it's Thank time. you, thank you. And I so appreciate that. And you're right, it does, it is that divine timing, that perfect timing, which has been part of my journey and certainly was part of my work with you to, to shift out of, and, and that's my whole platform, right? Get out of that strategic achievement and shift into what I call radiant achievement. Other women call it different ways. And uh, that's gonna be definitely part of our, our conversation today because part of radiant achievement is listening to your calling. And, and even, even in starting the show today, we talked about this a little bit ahead of time. I wanna set up for everybody who maybe if you know me or you don't know me, I tend to be that super positive, cheery person. And I love sharing the success stories. I love sharing the, the good news. And at the same time, I recognize that there's a lot of people suffering, a lot of women that are capable, um, powerful, smart, strong women that are suffering. They're stuck, they're overwhelmed, they feel hopeless. And, and I want to honor wherever anyone is at. And, and today, it's like my sincere commitment in it and intention to maybe light a spark inside somebody or that's listening that there is hope for you to to create that vision that you ultimately desire for yourself and and you're going to share your story which is powerful and every one of us have a story of struggle of falling down of heartbreak of loss and, and that doesn't have to be the end of our life the end of our journey that that can fuel can be Realchemized to to move us forward, and and so my, that's my really sincere intention today is to through your story and and um, my shares to to really light some some flames of hope for for the women that are out there watching and listening today. Yes, there's always Fabulous. a backstory, always a backstory of what it. I won't even say what it took maybe the circumstances that deeply moved us, at least for me, there were circumstances that took shape and form that I now call an evolving purpose because I felt as though I was living my purpose, mm. but then circumstances started to shift. And those circumstances are the backstory that you oftentimes don't hear so much about. What you see yeah. is the bright and shiny, <laughs> Um, right. And which is, you know, I call it sexy. It's very sexy to look at the bright and shiny. It's fun to talk about the bright and shiny. It's fun to talk about, um, you know, where we are. But the truth is, we would not be where we are without the backstory, the richness 
of that opportunity to cultivate through an environment that took us deep into kind of a peel back of who we thought yeah. we were and who we were becoming. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we get so very busy with the uh, success of it all that we, and I say we, I, sometimes can get very busy with, I know for myself, I was very busy with the achievement of it all that I did not notice how I had evolved and how I had shifted, how my values were taking different shape and form, how mm. the way I saw myself was very limited and one dimensional in relationship to what I was being urged to become. Mm. And uh, that, you know, took some shaking up. It took some big, some big <laughs> experiences and in yeah. order to wake me up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's dive into that a little bit. So uh, let's talk a little bit for a moment on the sexy side of things, because I know you just launched a yet another book, another uh, beautiful collaborative book um, about women emerging. And that has done really well. It's, it's still in the early stages of its getting out into the world, but uh, has had um, success so far. So congratulations on that. And um, what, you know, maybe what's, what's a takeaway for you out of this most recent success that um, would be something to, mm -hmm. to share? Absolutely. You know, I'm more clear than ever before that nothing can stop a woman who realizes her creative power. There's nothing that can stop us. And when you bring together a collaborative collective of amazing women who know their power to create and we link arms, nothing can stop us. So writing the amazing woman, it's your time to emerge did exactly that. It brought together women who were identifying and beginning to step more and more fully and completely authentically in to their power to create. And together we lifted one another into um, just a state of manifesting the next level of our legacy. I believe that right now, and I could speak a lot about this, and I know that you have other things you'd like to talk about, but I, I can't <laughs> wait to talk about this for a moment. Sure. Is that we as women are creating a new legacy. Uh, think about it. You know, our the legacy of women's leadership. I've been leading the Amazing Woman movement now for 20 years. And 20 years ago, the legacy of the Amazing Woman movement or the legacy of the women's movement, very different than it is today. Think about that. Yes. Think about the number of women that are uh, exercising their creativity through entrepreneurship or through uh, creating change through uh, social consciousness and social movements. Think about the women that are re-identifying and reimagining who they identify themselves to be in ways that will lift and inspire a nation of amazing women, but also the future of the next generations. And I say generations because I think it's multiple generations of amazing women. So no matter where we are on that spectrum of creating, I believe it's so important for us to remember that what we are doing every single day with the interactions we have with one another, just like you and I speaking right now, yeah. with the interactions we have with our family, with the interactions we have with our community and our loved ones, all of that has the power to create legacy. Yeah. And how are we choosing to do that is I'm very passionate about this conversation. <laughs> And it really came to me through, you know, circling back around to the amazing woman, it's your time to yeah. have a book. I realized that we were not creating a movement. We were creating a legacy. Mm. The amazing women in the movement are the legacy makers. Love so it. Every one of them have the ability through their own unique and individual distinctions and ways that they're making a difference in their lives and in the lives of their the members of their communities and their families, every part of their life is a legacy. When we mm -hmm. began to honor it in that way, Christine, it was amazing to me what started to come through. The level, you know, we just sat a little taller in our seat. Yeah. 
you know, we honored ourselves just a little bit more knowing that we have that power to create and we have the voices that we have. Um, I think it was, uh, I recently read a quote, it's that our voices of women do not need to be empowered. What they need to be is the way we recognize our voices need to shift, the way we recognize the value. We already have empowered voices. How are we choosing to invest them in something yeah. that can make a difference? To me, that's what legacy is about. Mm. And I think we're there. We're there. Yes. We, have to, we have to have conversations like this to remind each other. Totally. And, you know, look in the mirror and remind myself that, hey, there's something bigger going on here yeah. than what I may realize. Yeah. And it didn't me, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> just let me be reminded of that. Yes. So that as I take action in the world, I know that my action is rippling out and impacting possibly the woman sitting in, you know. I've got Donna DeLuca on my mind right now because I just spoke with her, but possibly it's rippling out and impacting a woman in Montreal, Canada. Right. Or rippling out and, and um, impacting a woman in, um, in Africa or in Japan or somewhere. My action, your action, all of our actions and the way we choose to define ourselves as amazing women and as leaders. Yeah. As, um, you know, somebody that's here to, to leave a very beautiful, powerful radiant footprint in the world how are we choosing to do that and it doesn't mean you have to lead a movement right no no you have well, to bring your best self to the to the you party. have to bring your best self and uh, so there's two nuggets i i want to touch on um because they are so powerful that you that you shared there's men it's all powerful but one of them is for myself growing up, I never thought about leaving a legacy. Uh, I, I felt that 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 was like a, a thing I heard related to like to mm -hmm. men, honestly, or big business owners or something. But but I love how you've set it up with with your ongoing and growing uh, work and and how you're getting ha helping more and more women to open their eyes that we are we are legacy makers and it and it happens by what we choose to do and who we're being every day in, in those interactions, which leads to my second point, which I loved. I was part of your launch event and you are masterful. And I, I really want women to get the power that happens when, when somebody, when we each of us have this ability to come with that open heart, with acceptance, with love, with encouragement and, and rally whoever is in our circle of influence and, and talk about uplifting everybody, the energy, the smiles, the shares. Like I just got goosebumps right now. Truly these women are lit up from the inside out and see themselves, see their lives, see the, their the potential and the possibility to create positive impact. And, and they know they're not alone. You know, you talk a lot about that linking arms, like, you truly create that. And, and I saw, I think I felt it in, in a deeper way in my body, what's possible when we, when we truly own our uh, potential and opportunity to do that within our sphere of influence. So I love that. I love that we, when we come together, it's about, I call it sacred witnessing. It's really mm -hmm. about looking at the woman next to us, now it's on Zoom, the woman next to us or the one on camera, <laughs> yeah. and, but it's the woman looking at the woman next to us and looking for the very best in her, the greatest creativity, the greatest um, mm. skill set, the greatest mindset, the greatest inspiration that's moving through her, the greatest creativity, how she moves us and witnessing that so that she can see it exchange yes. between us and when we do that that's really all that's necessary and you know how this first came to me is that I back 20 years ago I first started writing the amazing woman book series mm. and that began with interviewing women from all walks of life and when I would sit in front of a woman and we have to the front the story on this though is that I was not an interviewer I was not an author I was not a speaker I was everything that maybe we know me as today I was not so I would this was a brand new I love this <laughs> scary encounter for me to step into the room and decide I was going to interview someone like who was I to be somebody that could interview someone but I began to sit and have deep conversation which 
we could call interview and ask about their life and begin to acknowledge parts of themselves that somehow I was able to see within them that they had forgotten or denied about themselves. And through this interview, this exchange, I could witness and see transformation happening right before me. I could see the woman, her, her visual shifted, her color shifted, you know, there was more radiance coming from her face. She was sitting taller. There was a difference in the tone of her voice, but wow. was what was even more magical is that the same thing was happening within me. And I called it transformational interviewing because it really was a transformational interview. It was an experience where I sat with someone and together we would exchange the truth of our potentials, the truth of our possibilities mm. that had maybe been forgotten, but somehow yeah. within us, it became ignited. And that led me then to realizing that by building community in this same way, uh, we could begin to lift Maybe the, the way we honor ourselves, the way we define our feminine beauty, our feminine power, our feminine esteem, the way we go about creating our futures, the way we go about um, defining our own self image, which I believe is an ongoing experience of redefining and defining. <laughs> Absolutely. And I don't Absolutely. think we ever quite get there. But I realized then that through transformational interviewing and creating environments that experience others could experience that kind of thing that we could lift each other very rapidly and I, I I'm just so inspired by the question and by the conversation what happens when we do that is that new clarity comes in yeah. and that new clarity represents what am I here for mm -hmm. what am I here to share what talents do I have what capacities to heal do I have that I have forgotten that are, I've not forgotten, I've known about, but I've put them over on the side and undervalued them. Right, Denied right. Them. So well, through interesting. That exchange, the transformation yeah. that comes from us then begins to outpicture as a greater contribution in the world. Yeah, makes sense. Well, and I love that you said the word truth because I actually was journaling on that this morning and, and I've been thinking uh, it's come up in several conversations to really, um, ask ourselves is is this my truth is this true whatever we're doing thinking being is this true and and how often is it not our truth it's who we've conditioned ourselves to be or who we've become but we start to have those moments where like you said in those conversations you get to truly just uh, it's all part of it. Maybe it's kind of you, you're relaxing, you feel safe with somebody that you, you feel that that deep conversation start to stir those things inside you. And that you get to those, uh, those deeper truths that you've forgotten about, or that busy life has just ha haven't, hasn't allowed you the opportunity to connect with. And it's or just yeah. we've just undervalued. We have undervalued we've denied so it. many. Yeah, you know, we've thought. Yeah, I, I can't even begin to tell you. I've you know coached thousands of women, and ninety nine point nine percent or more, yeah, have undervalued their greatest gifts, talents, and capacities. Ah. And so it's about really seeing that in someone, seeing that and reflecting that to them in a way that begins to amplify. Mm. And I, I'm not gonna say give permission, but maybe find the within her, within her ability to remember it in such a way that it becomes to the forefront of what she'd like to bring forth into the world. So there's a new level of valuing, there's a new level of esteem around it. Love and, that. Yeah, we we love we that side. If she believes it in me, I'll believe it in me. Kind yeah. of added. Well, and you were that. you were absolutely someone like that for me. And I remember in some of our sessions <laughs> way back, you could see things before I could see them, right? And now I do that with my clients. So it's pretty it's pretty funny to see again that ripple effect and to be sitting here with you having my show. Um, my my book that's launching in May, like you saw and you could name all those things. And I had the the little 
little spark of it, right? Like the spark was there and- well, It was and all in you. It was it all was in all you. In it me. wasn't yeah. my yeah. idea. It was right. the sacred witnessing or the reflection of what right. I could see. And then you had the courage and the audacity and the, the confidence and the commitment to follow through and say, I'm going right. to step into this. Right. I'm going to, to voice it. Yeah. No matter what. Mm -hmm. So I think this might be a good segue because I know when I voiced some of those things, I had a very safe space with you and some of my inner circle girlfriends. And, and there's, there's, there were definitely the, uh, the naysayers. I was very cautious on who I shared things with. I'd love to, I'd love to go to your backstory. So we talked about some of that sexy stuff, right? But let's go to your backstory. And I'd love if you would share Marsh before you answered that calling to create this amazing, amazing woman legacy that you're creating, who were you back then? What were you doing? And how did you come to say yes or, or step into, or even hear and feel what you were being called to, to be in a, in a bigger way? You know, I'm smiling because <laughs> I was speaking in an interview, I don't know, a week or two ago about when I started my you know, stepped into my calling. And I started thinking about well, it was 20 years ago. And then I stopped and I said, you know what? No, I stepped into my calling when I was about six years old, sitting on a swing set in the backyard of my sweet friend's, her, her house in the backyard of her home, interviewing her <laughs> and then writing her story. Oh, it ended up oh. being in a um, newsletter that went out in the neighborhood. And it was no about way. very important things like her favorite colors and just who she, you know, who she was in my six-year-old point of view and her six-year-old point of view. And then Love I wrote it. a book when I was probably in first or second grade that was something like from, from, um, Baby Pins to Bobby Pins, I think was the title mm. of this book. So like from baby. <laughs> so that was my first entree into writing story was back when I was very, very young. And then I truly believe that purpose is speaking through us every single moment. It then took me and, you know, as I continued to, to grow I was in media for a number of years. I would, you know, and first started my career. I was in media. I was in uh, human relations management for a, a organization. So I understood career development from that perspective. I went into media and I understood what it is to create awareness for a brand or a product. I uh, then left television and went on to um, launch a promotional marketing agency for television and film, which then again, purpose evolving through me, gave me this insight into what it takes to create a movement around a idea wow. or a message. And I launched you know, characters like um, Elmo for Sesame Street, the Power Rangers. I did, I had big, big um, clients, studio clients, but also I had big, uh, character clients. So Elmo was a very big yeah. character client and, <laughs> totally. uh, you know, the power range is very big character client. So I understood what it took to manage those kinds of clients in a way that would create mass awareness for them, which I translate that into how do you create a movement around a message. Mm. And then is when I had what I call this wave of awakening. Okay. Mm. So I'd gotten to this place where I was equipped with the external skill set of what it would be to lead a movement. Now what I needed was the internal environment to ah. understand what the movement was. And I was very much um, at the time as leading a promotional marketing agency, I had 36 employees. It was very, very full long days and very much a type A overworking, stressed, personality that was way identified by the success of ah. the outcome, by the achievement of the outcome. So the success never truly felt like a success until it was completed. Mm. And I realized that very quickly that just as our purpose is evolving through us every moment, so is our level of creativity, 
So is our level of connectedness with what we're creating. So is our level of success every single yeah. moment. So it's not when you reach a finish line, but that didn't happen easily. You know, I, my mom passed away on January 15th of 1999, suddenly, unexpectedly uh, brought me to my knees. I was mm. just devastated by the surprise of it all and by the, um, the closeness, I think, that had not yet been quite understood. What she was here to teach me, mm. really, a lot of what she was here to teach me came afterwards. And let me tell you what happened was I was, um, I flew home to Evansville, Indiana, which is where I'm from originally. I live in Los Angeles now, but originally Evansville, Indiana. And I was sitting in the middle of what I called my mom's room, her bed in her room. She had all of her angels. My mom was very, very mm. feminine very spiritual, uh, wrote beautiful, beautiful prayers, spoke in church, mm. sang in church, wow. beautiful, a beautiful spiritual messenger. And uh, my grandmother and she both came from uh, another dimension, both came after they'd passed and spoke to me. And their message to me was, it's time for a search for the amazing woman. It's your time, a search for the wow. amazing woman. It's your time. And I had no idea what to do with that information. But the way it first began to take shape and form was I decided to write my mother's eulogy. Now think mm. about this. this is the first story that I would be writing about an amazing woman. I've written hundreds. Wow. Now. This was the wow. first one that I would be writing it about amazing woman. And I sat and wrote the eulogy. And back in 99, that was a very unusual thing for a daughter to stand up and deliver a eulogy that she had written. That wasn't mm -hmm. so common. Uh, but I found the courage to do it. I was not a public speaker. I was not a writer wow. at the time. But I felt compelled to put my heart into language and deliver it at my mom's um, celebration of her life. Hmm. What's interesting about that is that after I gave that eulogy, many of the family members, including my brothers, came to me and said, I didn't know any of that about mom. Wow. So there was a lot that I knew about my mother that wished to be shared. And yeah. she inspired that. She inspired that. A wow. search for the amazing woman. The first search that I did was with into my mom's, the wealth of her life and mm -hmm. brought that into um, so beautiful a, a legacy uh, that was a legacy through my words spoken at her eulogy uh, of what she stood for. And then wow. after that, though, it kept going. After that, a few months later, I got a diagnosis of lymphoma, which mm. was at my heart and my throat, which oh. was very, you know, you can imagine how spiritually meaningful this is. My yeah. heart and my throat are so interconnected today. I think all of us, we want to speak through our heart. And I had lymphoma mm. that was promising to uh, have a very... Um, devastating future really I was really not a, a, a oh my a, goodness and I had no energy you know I just had no energy but I somehow kept going and I spent time in nature Christine mm. and this why this is important is I spent time in nature which I believe is the feminine I spent time so I called upon my feminine uh, my connection with the feminine which was nature to begin to heal my body of this disease and also began my spiritual studies at that time. Mm. And Wayne Dyer was the mentor that I chose at the time and listened to him. I had a, a little, what are those called? A cassette player? And I don't even know if they make them anymore. I don't think so. But I would walk and I would listen to him and I would walk all day um, in wow. nature. And I called upon nature to infuse my body with healing energy mm. and then infused my spirit and my intellect with uh, Wayne Dyer's words. But it wasn't over yet. It wasn't over. Uh, then my dad died. So all oh. within 18 months, oh, I had this what I call a wave of awakening. It was my mom passing. Crashing waves, I, crashing yes, waves. Wow. My, the diagnosis that I had and then my dad dying all within 18 months. And I knew that life needed to change. I let my business go that I'd been building. I let employees go, which was heartbreaking for wow. me. And I stepped away, locked the door to my office and walked wow. away from bed 
life is going to change. It's a search for the amazing wow. woman. And I knew that there was time for me to awaken. And I, that's when I began the interviews. I just interviewed as many women as I could find to interview uh, from every walk of life. I would meet them in grocery store lines. I'd meet them in elevators. I'd meet them, you know, and connect with them. And then I went on to write some uh, really empowering books that changed my life, like writing the book about the female firefighters of FDNY yeah. after 9-11 and what they had to say to me as being trailblazers and pioneers in the field of firefighting uh, in 114 year history. The wow. first five women to serve was quite a, an experience to be with them. Wow. Learn from them. Yeah. So, I okay, can I, I can I pause for a second? Yes. I wanna, there's something you said, and I want I want to go back to this because I, I this was not an e I don't think this was an easy choice for you. You you had these three waves of of loss and 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 um, health issues, and then you. So I would love for you to dive just a little deeper into how you came to decide. Had, were you just like I'm done with this busy lifestyle? Or tell me a little bit, tell us a little bit about that, making that decision. I like, think was I, was heart, I was heartbroken. Okay. I think I was heartbroken. My, bro my heart was broken open. Wow. And there was some part of me. Did I feel that I had a calling? I don't think so. Okay. I felt that I was lost. Ah. And my heart was broken. Wow. And I knew that the approach that I was taking to my life was not the one that was appropriate for me any longer. Any longer, got and it, okay. Agreement, interestingly enough, because today we know that, you know, my, I think my number one value is my intuitive capacities. Mm -hmm. But at the time I had shut them completely down, Christine, you know, at the time that I say my heart was broken. I open, get that, <laughs> yeah. I made an agreement that said, I'm only from this moment on. Now where this agreement came from, I have no idea. But this agreement within me bubbled up and was at this from this moment on, you'll only make choices based on your intuitive knowing. You'll uh -huh. only take action from your intuitive knowing. And that was probably if I were to say, let me choose one decision that I made that propelled me into my future the most rapidly, that would be the one. Yeah. Because now I'd made this deal with myself. Wow. With myself that caused my intuition bec to become amplified mm. and I would call upon it constantly and I began to trust it more and more and more and more and that's a continuing a continuing yeah. ongoing process trusting our intuitive knowing because sometimes it speaks things that make absolutely no sense <laughs> at all like, yeah. I don't know. I'm like, like, okay, I'll yeah, try. I'm just going to ignore that. Maybe, yeah, maybe I, maybe I didn't catch that right. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe that's right. Yeah. Wow. So you, so what I, what it felt like for me is, is a similar thing. What I did is that there was that day I drew the line in the sand or I put that stake in the ground and I said, never again, am I going to deny what is stirring up and what's what I'm being called to do to, to be, to have whatever that is. And then like, I knew, like you said, my life, as I knew it, it, it was going to change and I wasn't going to, I couldn't continue that other path. So was there ever a point after that moment that you doubted you did the right thing or how, did you have support on this new path? How, how was that for you? So I, you know, I trusted my intuition. Here I am. I'm heartbroken and trusting my intuition. This is about the way my life was looking. I had no sense of direction. Uh, at all. I would like to tell you I did, but I did not. I'd like to have yeah. some grand story that, oh, then that. So yeah. what it did was it took me to um, connect with a friend of mine who's a very well-known intuitive guide and was my one of my first spiritual teachers. And he said, let's go down to this. We had dinner together. He said, let's go down to this bookstore. And um, I'm going to send a shout out to Eddie Connor because that's his name, Eddie Connor. So a very gifted, mm -hmm. gifted reader. And he said, let's, um, let's go down to this bookstore after dinner. And I said, okay. And we go down to this bookstore on the strip in the valley, wherever we were. 
And we go into the small bookstore and he hands me a book. And when he did, Christine, a charge went up my arm. It was like a vibration went Ooh. up my arm. And the book was called The Four Agreements. Uh. And I looked at him and I said, I don't know who this is. I don't know what this book's about, but I'm going to study with this author. I'm going to wow. send him hello. I'm going to study with this author. He said, Marsh, there's no way. This is my friend. This is, there's no way you're going to study with this author. He, this is an international bestseller. Oprah just named it the book that changed your life. The likelihood of you studying with this author is very, very slim. And I said, like it or not, yeah, believe it or not, I'm going to study with this author. So a week, maybe less later, I'm sitting in a restaurant and I pick up one of these whole lifetimes, you know, one of these ma the magazines. And here's this photograph of Don Miguel Ruiz, the author <laughs> of The Four Agreements. Yeah. And he's taking the group to uh, Teotihuacan, Mexico. Oh, my goodness. To, to journey, this journey to Mexico. And I said, <laughs> oh, I'm going to go on this. I, I love it. Phone and I write in the restaurant. I call and Rita Rivera answers the phone. And I said, I would like to go to, and I couldn't say it at the time, I Teotihuacan, Khan, I couldn't pronounce the name. I said, I just want to go to Mexico with you and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And she said, Oh, oh you know what? That that group is completely full. And I said, That is so strange because I see myself in Mexico with you. And she said, just a minute. She said, you know what? I see you in Mexico with us too. So she said, okay, you get ready. And if somebody cancels, you go to Mexico with us. Wow. So about, I don't know, four or five days before I'm getting ready to go and I'm packed up, ready to go. And I get the phone call. I catch the flight. I meet them in Mexico city. Oh my goodness. No one knew no one, on. knew no one. So I had really surrendered to purpose at this wow. time. Now, I did not know I had surrendered to purpose. Yeah. I did not know that, but I was at a level where surrendering meant more to me than being stuck. Hmm. Letting go of the way things had been. Yeah. That letting go meant more to me than being caught in the way things had been. So I got on the plane, went to Mexico, went to Teotihuacan, spent a week there, maybe maybe longer, with this group who happened to be all teachers of Don Miguel. I did not know. I had no idea. I end up in this group with all these beautiful, beautiful teachers. Wow. And I'm at the very last day, we're walking the Pyramid of the Sun. And I'm thinking, okay, good. I've done my work. Now my purpose is going to be rebuilt. Okay. Uh -huh. this, big, this big purpose for me is going yeah, to be. Yeah, check, this, check, check. This ready for small purpose, purpose for me, yeah. whatever this purpose is for me, is going to be revealed. So I walk to the top of the Pyramid of the Sun and absolutely nothing. It's, it's oh, cricket. No. There's nothing. <laughs> I have no clarity. I have no insight. Oh. So I'm walking oh. down the pyramid round and round and round and round. And as I'm walking, I have this mantra of surrender. It's okay mm. that I don't know. I don't need to know. Maybe it's more powerful that I don't know. This was my mantra walking the entire way down, which I know today was absolutely falling in, deepening, deepening, deepening into surrender of purpose. Yeah. And so I get to the very bottom of the pyramid and my feet hit the ground and I heard, create a day on which it's always brings up emotion oh my gosh create a day on which all women honor themselves wow and i thought wow create a day on which all women honor themselves <laughs> I said, are you crazy and it's like that is the craziest idea i've ever heard how would i ever do that and so oh my god clear and said uh, marsh from the very beginning you've been equipped for exactly this now, realizing how I'd been equipped ended up being such a deepening of my awakening, but it also began to announce my calling, which is to help other women realize how they too have been equipped from very early in their life and yeah. beyond, how wow. they're fully equipped to live <sighs> a purpose. And it's about discovering what is it. Yeah. And that sent me then on the journey of writing the Amazing Woman book series, establishing okay. day. Yeah, I I fell both feet in, committed to wow. a purpose that is ever evolving. You know, ever evolving, ever yeah. Evolving. I yeah. think it's ever evolving from the beginning 
sure it is six year old little girl writing that first story all the way through I agree well the your surrender like that kind of just took my breath away a little bit the amount of surrendering just keep continuing to surrender and let go because you know I I was stand I was putting myself in your situation and like we want to know, we want to check the box. We want, I came here for a purpose to get an answer. Like, where's my answer? And, 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 and I uh, have realized for myself, again, that there is so much beauty and power and, and magic and mystery in the surrender. And there's so much more than I, my brain cannot even comprehend or know, or know. And, and that's, that's where our true power lies in that surrender and connecting to that, whether it's your intuition, your higher self, yeah, source God to be guided in your unique way for letting that continuing to unfold. Like I, oh, that's just well, magic. the surrender is like pulling the curtain back and able to see all that you've overlooked, denied, undervalued. Yeah. So the surrender yeah. is not a I give up. The surrender, no. is, yeah, I am yeah. willing to see mm. how magnificent. Mm. I has really prepared me for this very moment. Yeah. How magnificent my creativity is, mm. how important my voice is in the way that it is. And I'm saying this for all of us, not just yes. for me. I'm right. saying this for all right. of us. Is that that surrender is, and you know, I wrote a book called The Sacred Agreements. And the sacred agreements, Love that the very book. first sacred agreement that had guided me early on was um be willing to grow beyond the defined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the surrender for me was this agreement that I made with myself that said, today I am willing to grow beyond the way I have defined myself wow. in order to open up to what's really truly here for me. Yeah. And that agreement every day has become, I think I even spoke about it the other night at our gathering is that that has yep. become very present for me. I'm willing to grow beyond the defined. And what does that mean to each of us individually is the question. How have I defined myself that is now I've outgrown? Yeah. It's a limiting definition. It's a misplaced agreement. It's a, uh, uh, you know, I was thinking this morning about the alchemy of agreement and just making that agreement with ourself in a new way, the alchemy, the transformational mm. power that can come by realigning an agreement with the way we define ourselves and the image that we hold of ourselves. And don't you imagine that it's well time that we as women step into that, especially since we're creating legacy now, we've decided. Yes. You know, that if, if we're creating legacy, how am I defining myself? And is it the way that I would want to be remembered by, or that I would want to reflect out to the world, to our youth or to other women or to just my life in general? Is it right. the way that I see myself in stepping forward in defining the career that I'm here or the, the passions that I'm here for my business or for the contribution that I choose to make, uh, philanthropic or otherwise? What is it that am I defining myself in such a way that is so outdated that yeah. it's 20 years ago or yeah. am I taking action in ways that are uh, very limiting in mm -hmm. the vision that I can truly create mm -hmm. for myself and for the world. So I think it's time. Um, Beautiful. Be willing to grow beyond the defined. Beautiful. Like I love that. That, that mantra. We, our shoes, our handbags, our jeans get, get changed more frequently, I think, than, than what we, than, what we allow for ourselves for our evolution I, so i love love that you are bringing that point up and it is it is the, you know the time is now more and more women i know your tribe is growing your the women you are that are connecting to you the women that are connecting to me and each one of us has our own unique contribution to make and any amount of stuckness limit feeling limited feeling overwhelmed is is not serving us and and we need to it's, be it's willing natural to let it we're go. going to feel that because it's the stretching yeah. and the growing yeah. that's happening. Yeah. But as we start to feel that that tightening, that's a sign that there's a bigger you 
there's a bigger me, there's uh -huh. a more expansive um, expression wishing to make its way to be yeah. known, to emerge. And I think that all of us, there's no one, no one has been overlooked with uh, what our contribution is, what our calling is, what our um, voice means. There's yes. none of us, no one yeah. has been overlooked. And those of us that have gone through periods where we feel as though maybe we were overlooked or maybe our voice doesn't matter. I know when I first started speaking, nothing would come out of my mouth. Um, I was so terrified to use my voice. Uh, one would never know that today, but it took a lot of great work mm. to be able to believe in my voice. Um, yeah. But any of us that feel that, we're really at the prime opportunity for surrendering to the next level, saying, I don't know, and it's okay if I don't know, just show me the way. Just yeah. show me some new direction. And before we know it, that level of connectedness with our higher creativity begins to create just wonder, awe-inspired wonder. Yeah. Um, it, it may not happen overnight, but if we stay with it, I promise you a new voice will uh, show up, a new focus will show up, a new sense of connectedness will show up. Uh, people will begin to show up in your life that will reflect mm -hmm. you. Um, mm -hmm. I just could go on and on about the stories yeah. that have taken shape through that experience and then through the gratitude that comes from saying yes. Yeah, so that's a, that's a perfect, perfect way to end. Before, before we, we sign off, is there, and, and, and that is a great kind of way to close. So I don't want to take away if that's, if that's uh, where we end because that's powerful for women to know they have not been forgotten. No one came here not being equipped, right? Is there, is there anything else you'd love to share? Um, I, I know on my, my question on my sheet is that piece of wisdom. If somebody is truly on the fence or they're stuck and they just can't seem to get started, you know, what would be that, that one golden nugget that you well, another one of my favorite time. mantras that I use for myself, I use for my clients. I think it's written in my book somewhere, but it's that right now in this very moment, someone is looking for exactly what you have to offer. So to release yeah. that level of yeah. I'm not enough, to release that belief or that agreement that says that somebody's already doing it, why should I do it? Any of those agreements that keep you stuck, not giving, know that the giving that you're doing is so, so, so needed in the world right now. And somebody right now is looking for exactly what you have to offer. And I will also say that somebody right now is noticing the difference you're making in their life. Mm. And I think that we make differences in people's lives that we sometimes diminish or undervalue. So to notice that as well and find the gratitude in both of those experiences. What am I giving and what am I willing to receive? Mm, beautiful, beautiful wisdom from a amazing woman. And Marsh, this has been fantastic. I will have all your contact information in the show notes so they know where to find you online, social media, and, and buy one of your book, one of your books, the most recent one or any one of the other ones that are speaking to them. So um, I so loved our conversation today. <laughs> thank you. I loved it too. It's great. And yes, thank you again for being here. And I look forward to sharing, uh, sharing this message uh, with the world. So and thrilled to celebrate you with, on mm -hmm. your uh, maiden voyage of uh, radiant achievement uh, with uh, Christine Howard. Thank you. Thank you. So, so fun to have had you part of it. And we launched this together today. So, Fantastic. okay, everybody, thank you. So grateful that you were here and uh, hope that there's some, at least one beautiful nugget that uh, you can put into action that inspired you in some way that lit you up in some way to take your journey with your callings and being a legacy maker yourself. We'll see you real soon.